Welcome back to Jeff Outdoors. It is the annual maple bucket cleaning event in the Jeff Outdoors kitchen. We've been in this kitchen approaching 50 years, which would include my whole life. But anyways, let's talk about cleaning for maple season. So these are the buckets that I use to hang on the trees. You can see it has the hole here, which the tap is gonna be here tripping into the bucket and this little hole goes on the hook on the tap and it hangs on the tree. So I have 50 of these and I store them every year. Um, after maple season last year, I cleaned them. Uh, they've been sitting. Maple season 2023 is here and it's time to clean them again. So the big, big thing about maple is keeping your equipment clean. Now you don't want to, what don't you want to use as far as cleaning? You don't want to use this. <laughs> you don't want to use this. You don't want to use this. Do not use it. Anytime, anytime you're using uh, like a liquid detergent, uh, those types of things, especially something toxic, <laughs> you certainly don't want to use something toxic. You're making a food. Uh, you want to make sure you're using something that is not going to stay on the equipment, linger around, and get into your sap eventually, and then eventually into your finished syrup. Uh, so what do you use? Let me show you. All right, so we're cleaning buckets. You see here I have a, a bin full of what looks like water. But that actually has a uh, non-toxic uh, cleanser in there. It's essentially an oxygen cleanser. And I am using Easy Clean. This is essentially no rinse. And this is the same stuff. Now this is just real quick. This is not an advertisement. I'm not contracted to say anything about this. I don't even know who makes this. I buy this at my hardware store where I, where I get all of my hard cider brewing equipment and supplies. And this is what is on the shelf there. This is what I buy to clean if I'm making hard cider. And this is what I use to clean all of my maple equipment. Uh, just a little water and a little oxygen cleanser, and that's it. So when it comes to making maple syrup, you want to make sure that everything that you have is food grade. So food grade, non-toxic cleansers, make sure everything is clean before the season. And I have 50, I have 50 of these buckets. So what I do, oops, sorry. What I do is I just put a little bit of water in at the bottom. Most of your cleaning is gonna be the bottom of the, uh, the sap bucket if you use sap buckets. Then I just take like a half cup of the pre-made cleanser. So one tablespoon of the cleanser to a gallon of water. And then you can put some right there in the bucket to kind of conserve water. And uh, I'm just going in and I'm just kind of wiping these down. I've got hot water going on in the sink here. Again, it's also no rinse. So I don't even have to rinse this really. And... Uh, that's it. That's a clean bucket. I've got 50 of these. I'm about halfway through. I've got a bunch down here on the kitchen floor that I'm just kind of, uh, I let these sit out and air dry overnight. So I've got 50 of them. My, my kitchen's a little, little full at the moment with the buckets. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, you're going to repeat that. Of course, why do I use buckets instead of, uh, you know, some people use bags. Uh, by the way, if you see my hat, this is not my establishment. This is uh, a supply company in New Hampshire where I buy maple supplies. And I just like the hats. So, uh, but anyways, some people use the maple bags. So the sap bags, a blue bag uh, that you hang on the tree just like a bucket. But you have to buy them new every year. Um, I just wanted a fixed cost where I didn't have to worry about buying something every year. Uh, I want to be in the business of collecting sap, not buying bags. So 
I invested in buckets that I will have essentially forever. I mean, they're, they're not going anywhere. You can't put holes in them uh, or anything. And the squirrels don't chew them up like they do the bags. Squirrels chew the tubing that some maple producers use. Squirrels chew up the, uh, can put their sharp little uh, fingernails in the bags and tear those up. I just didn't want to deal with that. Now, I only do 50 taps, but, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not like some huge maple operation. This is mostly for uh, the, the house here friends, family, and uh, anybody who, uh, you know, I do sell a little bit, uh, you know, nothing big uh, from what I have left. I make about 12 gallons a year total. So, and I put them in nice bottles and I put nice labels on them. So it depends on how far you want to go into the maple venture. Uh, once you start maple, you might not be able to stop. Now I'm at a good point where I have 50 taps. It's just me doing all the work. I have free wood I get from an Amish wood shop that I use in my wood-fired maple evaporator that I made from a 55-gallon barrel. And I bought a pan to set on top of it up in Vermont uh, to boil the sap in at about a one-inch depth. And uh, I can get about a six-gallon boil rate. You know, you're boiling off the water, and I could boil six gallons of water off of the sap. It takes 43 gallons here of sap to make one gallon of maple syrup finished for your pancakes. So uh, that's how it's done. And this is just the beginning. It's still January, still early. I'm not tapped yet. The trees aren't tapped. Just in the cleaning stage, watching the weather, kind of just kicking back and enjoying the cup of coffee in the morning right now, but still, still prepping and getting ready for the season to start. You don't want to miss the first sap runs. So uh, that's what we're doing. So get yourself some uh, you know, you can go to a, a home brewing, beer brewing store or hardware store and pick something up like that and use it for cleaning. And uh, if you have any questions about that, let me know. But uh, I'm going to get back at it and we'll see you on the next video. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, and we will see you on the next video. Either it'll be about maple season 